Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Anne. Ambassador Eli Karuhanga, as you make your way to the podium, I'd like to announce that uh, there is a message to the family from President Uhuru, which was to be delivered by Ambassador Catherine Mwangi. But because there's not much time, I will propose that she hands over the message to the family. Thank you. <coughs> Chantal. Shuti, Keza, God. My sisters, the Mianese family, fellow mourners, I want to make a confession. I am a very weak person. So if I fail to speak, like happened on my sisters and my fathers and my mothers, are you? I'm not responsible for my tears. I've tried. I met Chantal at the airport in the wee hours of the morning with the family, and I didn't cry. I was very proud of myself. But now, so I, I, if, I, if it happens, Forgive me, I'm not spoiling the party. But Ezra was also a crier. He cried as much as he laughed. So, first, I, Ezra was my friend. But he has up to now died without ever telling me why he was my friend. Me, I knew why he was my friend. Because, like you, you you were his friends because you know why you liked him. Those same reasons you liked him are the same reasons I liked him. What I did not know is what he liked in me because I didn't have anything Ezra type. But I was always, 50 years ago, I knew this man. I knew him when he was a boy. He must have been 20, about 20, 24. I met him at the Grand Imperial Hotel. There used to be a veranda there where young people used to be. They would start around 10 a.m., drink coffee, drink beer, and the girls, the young girls and the young boys would always be there. So for us who had just arrived in Kampara, Green, Ezra was uh, an experienced socialite. Um, and I think he was the leading star in Kampala. Why do I say that? Because every time Ezra arrived and found us sitting, because it was really a big crowd of young people, it was the place to be. He would just arrive, and as soon as he enters, everybody would know Ezra has arrived. So I started asking, but who is that guy? Who is this guy? He, 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 he had a brown jacket, he always wore it. He loved it. I loved it. Everybody liked it because he was the only one with it. So he had his ID with his jacket. Ezra would arrive and either call any one of the people there that I didn't know and announce them in such a deep and powerful and self-assured voice that you had no doubt but stop doing whatever you were doing and look at him. And then he would walk and he had a way, a way of walking which was very unique and very stylish. <laughs> one, one shoulder was always down, another shoulder was always up. And he was in this brown jacket and he was like this. And he would walk with such gaiety that, uh, and confidence that uh, nobody would do, and he would be speaking as he walked to find a seat. But before he could find a seat, he would name all the waiters by name, and he would call so-and-so, so-and-so, I've arrived. And they would bring my thing. 
and they would bring his beer and he would sit down with the company he wanted. This was going on every, week, every Saturday, Sunday. Then Ezra started, started showing us that he was a true revolutionary. He must have started that these young people need entertainment. This is not enough. So he started a young people's club at, uh, in Mengo. There was a nightclub there. What was it called? <laughs> New Life. So he took kids, young people, to dance during the day. So the dance would start at 2 and would end at 5. And Ezra would release all these kids back on the street to go back home. But yeah, what? So he has always been interested in young teenagers. Ezra then, somehow, I don't know who finally broke the ice, but I found Ezra. I think it was in a night, it was in a party. And he gave me a lift to the university because he had a car. For us, we were hitchhiking. So he dropped me at Makere at North Coast Hall. Since that time, people thought that he was a student at the university because he always came for me. He always hung around. He always met my friends. He just was always with me. And we have never parted since that time. Ezra is my twin brother. I think he's my Siamese brother. I think we are joined by the hip. And now my hip is hurting to the extent that on the 20, on the 23rd evening Sarah was not there and I fell in a bathroom and I thought that I had broken my hip I went and did an x-ray and I found that I didn't have a fracture but my hip my, my, my Siamese twin had left me with this hurting and that happened. I almost lost control of myself. Ezra, Becca, Wehanganye, Bunyanyezi introduced me to an amazing family before you came, Chantal. I met the Bunyanyezis, your children of Reverend Canon Yohana Bunyanyezi and his wife, Aida, who spoke every language in the book that I never expected her to speak. She spoke Swahili, she spoke Luganda, she spoke Rinyankore with perfection, she spoke in Rwanda, which was her mother language, she spoke other languages in Congo. That lady, God bless her. That family, God bless them. Before they died, they called me and told me. Reverend Yakana called me and took me in Ezra's house. He was in the room. He was coming to the end of his life. And he sent a message. We were there patting me and Ezra and others. He said, call me Eli. I entered his room. He said, Mwana wanje, ichara. Ahanga aha. Just come and sit near me on my bed. I sat on, her, on his bed. Then he said, I'm going to talk to you in Rinyankori. I know that you are my son. You love Ezra. Ezra loves you. Please look after him when I'm not here. So I came out. I told Ezra, I'm your father. <laughs> Ezra and I. Ezra and I saw many things. Ezra and I traveled far and wide. Ezra and I made many friends, made many friends, made young friends, made high and low friends. Then, my God, uh, came Chantal in our life. We chased Chantal. <laughs> Ezra did not see Chantal's face when he decided to marry her. He saw her behind. <laughs> behind in the sense of from the head, Backwards, so he did not. So what, he was at the Intercontinental, and Chantal passed by with her Kenyan girlfriends at the university. And when he saw her like this, he said, "I will marry that girl." <laughs> so then I came along. I said, "Ah, 
When I saw the face, I said, oh my God. Ezra, 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 we hang on, okay? <laughs> no, we hang, when you hang, we say, why hang on, murra? You, you have now climbed the stars. You fall down from the mountain. Now you cannot, that one, is, uh, 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 Ezra. That is not our class, my friend. <laughs> no, he said, then I told him, God bless you, but you try. First of all, Ezra, that girl is glamorous. First, she is so beautiful. She's so tall. She's even going to dwarf you. No, no, nobody will ever recognize that you are anywhere near. He said, in Dabushak. Oh, cut a long story short, we went to an uncle of hers in Nairobi. Chantal finally fell for us. Thanks, thanks to Intercontinental Nightclub. <laughs> On the seventh floor, there used to be music there. There was a guy there called Sal Davis. He used to sing for us and play music. And Chantal would... First of all, Ezra did not know how to dance. <laughs> That was one of his biggest weakness. But I knew how to dance. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons he liked me. Because I would kumunyerum fungo, I would just represent him. But on Chantal, he learned how to dance because Chantal is a dancer. So she loves the dancing. So through this, we got Chantal. We went, we introduced Chantal. We married Chantal. We, we went to London. We did our shopping. We even brought a, a photographer from London. <laughs> Let me tell you, at that time, Mane has, had visited Ezra. He was a guest of Mane because Mane was all over him. He had two Mercedes Benzes coupe, the latest one. I even remember the numbers. We swung in Kampala, my friend. You have no idea. We were faithful to you. We were faithful to the end. Ezra got married. The wedding was attended by dignitaries, none other than President Museveni in Rugogo Indoor Stadium. Have you ever had anybody marrying in Indoor in a stadium? We married in a stadium because of the population. The President Museveni attended and graced the occasion at that time in 1980. Good gracious Lord. We were in the middle of a very seismic political struggle. But this man had supported our revolution. We, then Chantal and Ezra went for a honeymoon. I'm sorry to take you this far. Well, they went for a honeymoon, but I've never seen a crowded honeymoon. Have you ever, take, see, have you ever seen anybody going with his friend to a honeymoon? As Stella and I, and our friend Andrew Tender and his, and his wife, he said, come along, let's go to the honeymoon. I said, what nonsense is that? Off we went to Bujumbura, where Chantal had her relatives, to the honeymoon. And we had what we call Bonane there, end of the year Christmas. From there we went to, back to Intercontinental where we danced with Sal Davis. And then we went to Mount Kenya Safari Club. On top of Mount Kenya there is a very beautiful lodge there. We have a lot of lovely, lovely photos of, young, of these young women. And we had a good time in our honeymoon, in our combined honeymoon. <laughs> Meanwhile, we had, of course, I had been his best man. Then we had this person, Chantal, even if you don't do anything for us, the fact that you produced Keza and Shuti and now look after God is enough for me. <laughs> and, and, and God, as I said on your wedding, I thank you so much because when you went to look for a woman, you looked for a girl who looked like Kezan, <laughs> Dr. Shibet. Oh my God. We went to the Karenjin world and found the jewel of a girl and married her. Oh God. Oh God. Thank you so much. Anyway, I want to cut a long story short because I see that Keza doesn't like me to speak a lot. But what can I do on a day like this? Ezra, you've not been fair to me. Because you've died. Ezra, you're not supposed to die. You lived longer. You are a giant. You were bigger than... First of all, Ezra was a revolutionary. He was amazing and incredible Ezra. 
born in this family which was an amazing family with brothers who were completely unique all of them totally different from the other all of them none of them did what the other one did the sisters the same thing none of them was the same they had jack jack's children please stand up they were he was and grandchildren jack was one day i brought my mother from camp from our village in yabushozi when we reached rakai we found a roadblock and they told us all the cars to stop because there were people coming from heaven and falling down they were paratroopers me i knew the word paratrooper i told my mother my mother look at people falling from the sky she said i'm away do they have a mother who allows them to fall from the sky to the ground and we didn't know even how they fell because they fell the parachute opened when we could not see behind the shops jack was a paratrooper at that time when planes were not popular we can use had a, a paratrooper then there was john john university graduate in north Hall. He came with a motorcycle and dropped it on top of the floor. We had had an earthquake in, in Kasese. Many people had died. We thought the earthquake had come. If he drove the motorcycle from one end to the other. We thought it was an earthquake. My God. Everybody who had in the, we all ran out naked. And those who had brought people who were not supposed to be there were all out with them. <laughs> but he was a footballer. He played football for Uganda. He was a striker. He was messy. And as I told people one time, it was John Nampira. We won the Africa Cup. Gospel Cup. The Wingenyes' children were amazing. Then there, of course, there was Emmanuel. John's children, please stand up. Thank you. And then there was Emmanuel a business entrepreneur by par excellence. He dominated the cargo and logistics industry. My God. And then there was Ruth. She has the best handwriting. If she writes an air ticket, nobody can leave you in an aircraft. She has been part of UTB. She still works for UTB. She's still our sister. Nunu, please stand up. She's outside. Then, there was Anne. Still here. There is Anne. She worked in the World Bank. This family is an amazing thing. World Bank Executive Secretary. She is there. She's there with tired, earning a lot of money. If you see Anne, I was with her at school. We share a birthday. Then there was the late Winnie. A person who went to Germany, spoke Germany, took me to a restaurant where they served food which is not cooked, namely meat which is wet, dry. They cut it there and give it to you. She spoke German. She was a friend of the princes of Germany, the presidents of Germany, billionaires. These people, the beginning people, are, then there is Mary, our grandmother, our sister. Oh my God. Have I forgotten another sister? No, let me try and stop. The family that introduced me to adopted me as their son. I became a brother. I became a twin brother of Ezra. I was accepted everywhere. Then came the revolutionaries. Ezra was a revolutionary. He supported the movement. He gave us a car. He gave us praises. He raised, fundraised. He was the best auctioneer during our time. He gave the car to Mama Janet to drive the children in Nairobi in exile. Him and John. Him and Emmanuel. Ezra supported RPF. Ezra and I, we bought a bridge to cross to Garamba for RPF. Ezra supported Kenya in their growth and revolution. Ezra bought a ticket for Raira Odinga to go in exile in Norway. Ezra was Ezra. Ezra introduced me to Kenyan friends. Here they are, a whole delegation. The Uhuru family is here. Please stand up. Ambassador Christine, Ambassador of South Africa, please stand up. 
Thank you. Thank you. Please, the, the, all the relatives of Mosei who have come from Nairobi, please stand up. Peter Kihanya, Migai, and family and the children. And you have heard President Uhuru is sending a message. Ezra started businesses. I'm concluding. Ezra started businesses. Ezra started businesses. All his businesses were new thinking. New thinking. When he opened Capital Radio, it was the second radio to be opened in Uganda. Now there are 370. When he opened uh, Bancom Interswitch, where we draw money from, you, own, you have money in DFCU, but you can get money anywhere. It was Ezra who brought it here. He got to Miko to give us money, and Bob Kabone, thank you. Ezra went to Kenya. He put money on your airtime. When he's finished, when you're speaking, he lent you money. He, that's what Keza runs. I am proud to know that Tiyat Gawush, Ezra Tiyat Gawush, he has left you, Keza. Let me say bye to my friend. It is not fair for me to leave this podium, Ezra, without thanking you, without thanking Chantal, without thanking your family which you loved so much. We love you. It is going to be very, very difficult for us to live without you. We will miss you, but your name will always be there. Ezra, Ezra, Ezra. Fare thee well. Greet the parents. Greet that man, Jesus Christ, who is now 2,020 20 years old and two days. <laughs> Let him to take care of you. God bless you.